Hello there, sociologists. Welcome to your first online lesson. This is very exciting, is it not? I am here in my classroom with Penelope. She is sprouting a lily. See, the world is not all doom and gloom. I've got Penelope by my side. All is well. I am going to teach you today about different types of interviews. So we have learned in class about structured interviews, which is when you ask a list of questions and you don't deviate from it. And we've learned about unstructured interviews, whereas we have a bit more of a conversation with the person that you are interviewing. Um, there are two more types of interview that we're gonna learn about today, and I'm gonna set you some work on it, and I'd like you to kind of complete that um, in your books, but also have a bit of a tough chance to get a bit practical with it, um, to sort of hopefully have a conversation with people at home um, and break the self-isolation uh, mist that is flying around the country right now. So, the first thing I'm gonna teach you about is group interviews. Now, I think that might be back to front on my screen. That's very annoying. Group interviews, when you interview a group of people. Who would have thought? Now, the way that group interviews work, and I'm gonna draw this for you, please don't laugh at my drawings. The way that group interviews work is you are the interviewer, that's the little I there, okay, interviewer, and you have a group of people in front of you, and they all, are sitting around the table in a time like this they'd be three meters apart and they're all sitting around a table and they are all asked the same question at the same time okay so you would say for example let's say the interview was about um, attitudes towards the legalization of euthanasia in the United Kingdom okay and you would have a group of people there so maybe four five or six people and you would interview them as a group. So you would say to them, right, as a group, what do you think about this? And then they would take it in turns to feed back their ideas to you, okay? They wouldn't talk so much to each other. It's all about them feeding back their ideas to you as the interviewer. Now this is practical for a number of reasons because if you think about an interview one on one with a person you have to spend a long time talking to them getting their ideas writing them down etc etc if you wanted to do five interviews with five different people that takes a lot of time you can cut that time down by interviewing all five people at once. Okay, so it does mean that you've got shortened time, which is much more practical. So it's a thumbs up for the practicality of it because they're all talking to you in the same forum. The issue with group interviews, what we find a lot of the time as sociologists, is that, is that sometimes people are a little bit less likely to share how they really feel. Remember we talked about the interviewer effect, which was the idea that you, um, you know, maybe aren't going to share maybe your true ideas to an interviewer. This is even more heightened with a peer group, okay? So let's say I interviewed five of you in the classroom and you were all sharing your ideas and maybe you didn't quite feel comfortable with the person you sat next to or maybe you, you fancied the person over there and you don't really wanna look bad in front of them, you might not share your, your whole opinion. Okay, so in a peer group setting, sometimes one or two people might dominate the conversation and these three might sort of sit out and not say very much. These three might rather have a one-on-one -on -one chat with the interviewer to get their opinion out. Okay, so it is practical, but it's not always valid. Okay, and that's a group interview. I would like you to pause this video and I would like you to rewind it and I'd like you to make some notes about what a group interview is and the practical advantages and the validity, validity disadvantages. Okay, so rewind it, watch it again, you poor things. Um, what it is it, what, what is it, practical advantages, validity, disadvantages, and then we will move on to focus groups. Okay, so pause it now. Have you paused it? Make sure you do. Okay, focus groups. Focus groups are our second type of interview. Again, it's back to front. Now, focus groups. You are the interviewer. Here you are. Mm -hmm. 
In the same way as a group interview, you've got a group of people all together, okay, so everyone's in the same room, so it's practical, but it's slightly different here. What you do is you throw out a topic to the group, so you've got five people here, okay, all around the interviewer, there we go, I can count to five. Um, you've got all those five people there around the interviewer, but when you throw the topic out to the group, rather than every person feeding back to you, what you do is you sit back and you watch them talk to each other. Okay, so the focus group looks a lot more like this. You throw a question or a topic out, as in the last one, but here they don't talk back to you. You watch how they discuss with each other. Okay, so you watch how person one and person two talk about the same topic and then person five gets involved and talks about it as well. They are talking as a group and you are there trying to make notes, trying to work out what they've all said, trying to get an overall picture of their, of their views. A lot of the time this is used in marketing. So let's say for example I was making a new product and I would bring this product to um, a group of people. So let's say I was making some, some fresh crepes, yeah, a brand new pair of shoes. Um, I don't know, the, these shoes have got the ability to add um, six foot to your height so you now become a ten foot giant. Um, and I take these to a group of people and I say, I put them on the table, plonk them down, I say, right, what do you think about these fresh crepes? And everyone has a little chat about it and they all get involved in their groups and they talk about it and I'm there as the interviewer going, okay, I'm going to sit here and, and take the overall picture and get a flavour of what these guys think about it. Okay, so again, it is practical in the sense of you're saving time and you're also saving money because you've not got to interview five different people. It is good because you get to have an opportunity to get the ideas of a group of people so you get a sort of a more representative sample. Again, it's not highly valid because there are some people that could dominate the conversation. We all know who they are, yeah, the ones that love to dominate the conversations. They might say loads and they might say not very much at all. But it, again, it's an opportunity for you to get a group understanding. And you as the interviewer are saying a lot less. You're listening to what they're saying a lot more. Okay, so rather than asking question after question after question, you are just listening to them talk to each other. Okay, so what I want you to do with this one is I want you to um, briefly explain what a focus group is and how it is different to a group interview. The key here is who interacts with who. In a group interview, who do they interact with? You. In a focus group, who do they interact with? Each other. All right, and that's your key difference. And then again, what's practical about it? What's less practical about it? What's valid about it? what's less valid about it. Okay, that's your first task. We're not gonna do any more on that today. We're gonna to just look at those two types of interviews. And then next lesson, we're gonna look at observations and what observations are and why they're very, very exciting. Okay, so have a lovely day. If you have any problems, get in touch with me. I'm gonna upload this onto, onto YouTube or show my homework. I've not quite worked out which yet. Um, and if you need to watch it again, by all means do. Um, and just say a quick goodbye to Penelope because it's going to be a while until you see her again. So, bye-bye.